Donald Trump's failures in Atlantic City might not have been so damaging to him if another of his grand designs hadn't failed on his home turf in New York. This abandoned railroad yard on Manhattan's west side was Donald Trump's field of dreams, the largest undeveloped site of land in Manhattan with magnificent views of the Hudson River. Trump bought it for $93 million, and he planned to put up the world's tallest building there. You can build two 75-story towers for less cost than you can build a single 150-story uh, tower. So the only reason you would want to build a 150-story tower is for status. Economically, it's insane. You know, one of the reasons that I'm trying to get approval to build the world's tallest building, it's the only lure I can see to get a major company to come to New York. Trump thought he could get NBC to leave Rockefeller Center and relocate in his project. They didn't. He also saw Trump City as a gift to the West Side, but the people of that neighborhood rose up against him. Run out into the parking lot laughing. Actors, writers, political activists, in no time at all, they were fighting Trump. He's moving ahead full steam with the project, trying to win approval for the plan. As a matter of fact, he's filed what's called an environmental impact statement. I can show you to the ceiling, is this correct? To the ceiling in EIS. It goes to the ceiling. This is a four volume, 2,000 page technical document, which is supposed to project the impact of the plan. Well, you can claim all sorts of things if no one bothers to question you. I don't know who the hell's going to read it. I don't know how it's even possible to read. West Pride has a team of professionals, top experts in environmental engineering, law, urban design, and economics, who are going through this whole thing with a fine-tooth comb. Look, I think New York is but a Trump city, kept promoting his and dream. New York is our biggest city, and I think New York should have the world's tallest building. Um, in all due respect, here in New York, we have always believed the biggest is best. In the old days, there were a tiny handful of skyscrapers in New York, and they were thrilling to us, especially when we could see them from a distance, and they symbolized the greatness of New York City. But when you pile one skyscraper next to another so the squirrels could leap from one top to the next, pretty soon you're living in the bottom of a well. Psychologically, you feel uneasy. You're in shadow. Something is wrong. You're trapped inside something which is way beyond the human scale and none of the things that we need like light and air and the sun on our skins is any longer present to us. Certainly he wants to build the tallest building in the world somewhere. I mean he has a real edifice complex. I mean he's got a problem. He's got to have the biggest. It's like the kid who has to have the biggest and best toy. It's the American dream gone berserk, really, is what it is. I mean, you're allowed to dream as big as you want, but if your dreams step on the lives of ordinary people and ruin the quality of their life and their neighborhood, you have to be stopped. For now, Donald Trump's field of dreams lies empty, and it has become another debtor's field for him. In interest and taxes, it costs him $60,000 a day, $1.8 million a month, $21 million a year. It took years, but those numbers finally began to impress even Trump. And to the surprise of many, the dictatorial developer turned into a conciliatory collaborator. And all those people he used to fight with, suddenly they were his best friends. The tallest building in the world? Suddenly it was any building his opponents in the city would let him put up. But like almost everything else in Trump's life, this project's future remains uncertain.